Hi and welcome to another episode of Reckon Brian Master. Today we're making homemade Piadina flatbread with Philly steak and gorgonzola. And what you need for it and how to do it, I'm going to show you in this episode. And this is what we need for today. Now we need some flour, we need some olive oil, we need salt, pepper, water, aceto balsamico, we need gorgonzola, we need garlic, we need some steaks, we need some Dijon mustard, we need sugar as well as dry yeast. In the first step we're going to mix the dry yeast as well as the sugar in the warm water and it should have about 40 degrees Celsius and we're going to let that stand for about five minutes um, and obviously we give that a quick whisk um, but so that the yeast has time to start working and then we're going to mix it with the oil, the salt and of course the flour. Whilst we're waiting for the yeast to work, I've already taken care of uh, the vinaigrette that we're using today. Now it's two thirds olive oil, one third balsamic vinegar, uh, one teaspoon of the mustard and uh, about half a clove of garlic and then obviously um, some sugar, about a teaspoon and some salt and pepper. Now the nice thing about this thing here is um, once you close it you can give it a nice little shake and it really mixes up all the ingredients and then you can set it to the side and we're ready to go. Now for the dough I've already put the flour into my mixer and we need two teaspoons of salt which we're gonna put in here now and then three tablespoons of olive oil and then we're going to add the sugar, water and yeast mix. Now we're going to let that uh, work in the machine until um, the dough is one consistent mass on like uh, low revs and then we're going to increase the speed a little bit um, for another like 10 minutes. 10 minutes later the dough is ready and what you want to do is you want to form it into a, a nice little ball and then we're going to put it in a, um, in a bowl and we've coated the bowl with a little bit of olive oil and so what you want to do is you want to put it inside and uh, make sure that all sides are coated with the oil a little bit of the dough as well and then we're going to cover it with cling film and make sure that um, it stays at a warm place for about an hour and a half, two hours or until the dough has doubled in size. An hour and a half later the dough has nicely doubled in size and what we're going to do now is we're going to cut it in four um, in four uh, pieces. Um, yeah, sorry for the hanger that I had there in my brain. <laughs> and um, what you want to do is you're going to set them aside a little bit and you're going to knead them a little bit, form them into a bowl and then we're going to um, create a flatbread that is roughly 25 centimeters in diameter uh, and about a centimeter thick. This is pretty much it and what we're going to do now is we're just going to rest it on some baking paper and stack them one on top of the other. And last but not least, before we can actually go outside on the barbecue, we need to take care of the gorgonzola cheese. Uh, now, as both my children don't want to eat uh, cheese with their pita, uh, sorry, pita dina, um, so this is only for my wife and myself. So what I am going to do is we're just going to cut up some little chunks that then will get thrown later on onto the bread and we'll give it that distinct Italian flavor. Welcome outside and um, what I've done is I'm using my pizza stone for the piadina and obviously the sear zone for the steaks and uh, as you may have noticed I haven't uh, put any salt or pepper on it yet. Um, I prefer to have them this way and um, I will season them afterwards. 
So we give them a nice sear for 90 seconds uh, and then we rotate them and then flip them and we are looking for like a medium rare to medium um, internal and then we're going to put the piadina on the pizza uh, stone in just a second. 90 seconds are up and we're going to give them a little twist. And on they stay for another 90 seconds. Whilst our steaks are cooking away, we're going to put the first piadina on. So very simple. We just rest it on there until it gets a nice little crusty exterior, especially on the bottom. And then you take them off. 90 seconds are up. And we're going to give them a quick flip. And close the lid. Another 90 seconds later, another flip or another twist, so to speak, and then we're going to rest them on the top rack until they reach their internal temperature. And we're ready to put them on the top. And let's have a quick look at the Piadina. But it's starting to brown on the bottom already, so this is great. We'll move it a little to the side and put the second one on. And then towards the end of the cooking time, what you want to do, and that's why I moved the pizza stone to the hotter side, is you're going to just rest them directly on the grate and get those lovely grill marks on the bread. And just a couple of seconds later, and doesn't that look fantastic? So I'm gonna finish this off now and then I'll see you back inside. One thing that I almost forgot because I made um, the Piadina breads for the kids first is obviously the Gorgonzola for us. So I've already flipped them around and what you want to do is you just want to put the Gorgonzola chunks on there. And let that melt. And let all the lovely flavors come out. A couple of minutes later the Piadina is ready, the steaks are ready. Um, we're just going to take care of the salad. So just a little bit of dressing over it and let's cut that open. But that looks absolutely phenomenal. Wonderfully medium rare to medium. So what you want to do is you take a little bit of salad, put that on here, put a few chunks of that steak on there, just like that. And then you close it up. And there you have it guys, our Piadina with Philly steak and Gorgonzola. And we're gonna dig in now. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video about the Piadina flatbread with the Philly steak and gorgonzola. Now, to be quite honest with you, I think next time I'm going to make the Piadina slightly bigger so that they are a bit thinner um, because then it might be easier to fold. But overall, it was a very tasty dish. It came out nice. Um, we, we really enjoyed it, so I uh, hope you did as well. Now, if you did enjoy the video, I would appreciate a comment and a thumbs up. And obviously, please head over to that subscribe button for more great videos to come. And I hope to see you soon again at Redken Brymaster.